So, uh, Namaskar and uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this episode of uh, Iway Encounters. Uh, our guest today is uh, Mr. Ketan Patkar, who is a senior executive with uh, Trans with Trans with Trans Union. Uh, Trans Union is a company which is involved with uh, doing the civil civil ratings. Uh, this is basically credit ratings. So I guess um, Ketan, while he starts, he would also talk a little bit about the company and uh, the services they offer. And uh, uh, and today's topic is uh, financial literacy, which I think is pretty critical for uh, uh, for all of us. Um, and and therefore, I personally am looking forward to getting some exciting tips and insights into, you know, uh, uh, the topic of financial literacy, talking about savings, budgeting, and so on and so forth. So I'm looking forward to this and welcome to all of you. Uh, I'm sure during the course of the talk, all of you would also want to uh, ask questions. You must be having your doubts. So you can actually put your questions in the chat box. Um, the question Q and A would be at the end of the uh, session. So uh, uh, Ketan would speak for about 40, 40 to forty five minutes, and then uh, open to questions. And uh, if he if he's uh, in the mood, he will probably ask, uh, make it a little more interactive. Uh, have you asked questions even in between? But I leave that to him entirely. So, uh, Ketan, thank you very much for accepting our invitation and thank you for uh, uh, being our speaker today. The floor is yours. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, actually, we need to thank you for making us part of this a great journey. Uh, it's, it's not only about financial inclusion, but to be a part of any knowledge sharing session would be a great honor to me. Uh, while talking about me and TransUnion, uh, most of us might have heard Sybil score in some fair, uh, form or the other. Like whenever you go to bank or while you're talking to some people in your network, you might have heard that loan lena hai to Sybil score acha hona chahiye. That Sybil score is prepared by us. TransUnion is the owner for the uh, Sybil score. Along with Civil Score, we also work on various different products such as there are various aspects in that loan, like your entire loan history, how your repayment behaviors are. Uh, is there any fraud aspects in the journey? So all these products are prepared by uh, TransUnion. I work with the fraud and ID vertical where we try to identify the intent of the customer as well as if there is possible uh, mishap or possible fraud being done in the journey we try to identify those while building certain products uh, that's from me uh, i have shitika with me who looks after the csr and is closely working with george and similar many such organizations where transunion is actively working to spread not only the awareness, but if possible, if we can help out in one way or the other. That's about us. Uh, talking about today's uh, discussion topic, it, as George sir said, I would be more than happy if I get some questions in between. Uh, what we will be discussing today is about uh, financial literacy. Rather than financial literacy, I would say, let's call it budgeting. In simple words, I get some amount of money every month. How should I use it? And why everybody is all gung ho about uh, saving? In general, there is a saying that if you are getting X amount of money, there should be 20% of that money saved each and every month. Why are we saying that? Okay. There are basically in your personal budgeting, there are three different aspects which you talk about. One is the income, second is the expense, and third is the saving. Once these three are done, then we move on to investments. Okay, let's uh, start with understanding what income is. Many of us are understand, say, 
consider our income as what we get through our salary or something which we earn via our business. However, our income is not only fixed. However, there, there are certain aspects which are variable as well. For example, there might be a certain interest income which you are getting over FDs. There might be rent on a property which you might have acquired. There might be windfall income, a gift which you have received, a cash gift on a birthday or say any, if, if you are getting married, you might have received some cash in that. There are various different types of income which you keep on receiving. One needs to understand what is his monthly income fixed as well as variable. Once he understands that these are my fixed source of income, how would say, Manu to bolia ke income identify karo. How would you identify this income? What you have to do is go back and possibly write down your incomes every month. Ke is maine mujhe interest me itna earning hua hai. If you keep get if you get your passbook updated, if you get your salary statements and if you have some certain rents or something, some some other type of income, just note it down in one page, page of piece of paper or in Excel or whichever way you like. What you have to do is go back in the history for six months. Note down each and every income which you have received for that particular month and average it out for six months. And assume that this income would remain constant for the next year. This will take care of our income part. Now, when I say uh, income agar identify kar rahe hai, how would how would I do it for business? Business mein koi, I don't know, aaj mera profit hoga, kal mera loss hoga, what would I do? For business people, jaha pe aapka ek stable income nahi hai, you don't get salaries. Or you might say ke, main akela ho, mere paas koi gift, mujhe koi gift nahi mil rahe hai, mera koi savings nahi ho raha hai, how would I identify income? What you will have to do is, expand this horizon of six months to 12 months or one and a half year and identify that in one year, possibly in financial year, mein, say April 1st, se leke, March 31st, how much income has come, income aaya hai, how much you were able to generate and divide it by 12. And assume karke chal, okay, this would be your monthly income. This would be one of the critical aspects to identify because on this basis, your month-on-month budgeting will be that your X amount of income has been done, you have to do expenses and you have to do savings. Now, when we talk about savings, what we say is that 20% में save in 20%. Okay? If we look at today's day, uh, generally the general public, what they do is that मेरा दोस्त महीने में 2000 रुपए सेव कर रहा है मुझे भी 2000 रुपए सेव करने हैं बट नोबडी नोस कि वो 2000 क्यों सेव कर रहा है और मैं क्यों कर रहा हूं इट्स इट्स जस्ट दैट के इट्स इट्स बिकमिंग अ हर्ड मेंटालिटी कि एवरीबॉडी इज सेइंग कि 20% सेव करो मैंने से 20% आपको कहा सेव करने के लिए यू गो बैक एंड यू स्टार्ट ट्राइंग टू सेव 20% बट इट शुड नॉट बी दैट कि आपको सिर्फ 20% ही सेव करना है यू विल हैव टू गो बैक यू विल हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई कि व्हाट आर योर गोल्स what are your short term goals? What do you need in three months? There are some requirements that you need to fulfill in one year. There are certain goals which would be three to five years away. And there are some that you need to retirement at retirement time. You will have to plan accordingly. And the simplest way to do this is to save 10 to 20% of your income every month. Now the fundamental into this is that you have to make a discipline banana hai to save. अब एग्जांपल लेते हैं अगर आज केतन की सैलरी 10000 रुपए है ठीक है केतन को 5000 आज उस 10000 में से 2000 रुपए सेव करने हैं ठीक है नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस 2000 रुपए तो मैंने सेव कर दिए अब आज आप मेरे हाथ में 8000 रुपए बचे व्हाट शुड आई डू विद दोस 8000 दोस 8000 आर देन स्प्लिट इनटू टू कंपोनेंट्स एक होता है एक्सपेंसेस, एक होता है मुझे जो अच्छा लगता है उससे खर्चे। What are those expenses? If you ask me personally, what I say, expenses are those 
expenses should only be those things which are at most necessary for you to continue living a standard life agar aapke paas aapko rent dena hai aapko groceries leni hai doodh kharidna hai aapko travel karna hai office location pe aapke medicines hain ye sari jo cheeze hoti hai along with this there would be certain recurring expenses each and every month which are at most necessary for you these all become a part of expenses all other expenses which you make are just needs so uh, those will be wants ke ye agar mujhe nahi mila if i don't go for a outing if i don't have a if i don't go for any expensive meal if i don't go via cab i if i keep i if i stick to the per, the public transport that don't hamper my standard of living however agar mere paas expenses karne ke baad aur savings karne ke baad additional income bachti hai i would urge you to spend it on yourself why i am saying spend it on yourself is because we don't work to slog there has to be certain percentage of income which is supposed to be spent on yourself when i say spend on yourself it need not be ke main bahar ja ke kuch acha khana khau ya kuch bhi it's it's on anything which you want you may say ke mere 10000 rupaye ki income mein se mere 5000 rupaye kharche hote hain mere 2000 rupaye maine savings kar liye ab mere 3000 bache but mujhe is mahine kuch nahi karna you can keep it in your savings account you will say you want to buy a good phone you want to take a trip which will cost to 10 15000 what you can do is you can save this 3000 rupees every month just to for for the next 5 months and you can use that 5 15000 rupees for a good trip which will keep you happy and your mental stress would be down this is what the segregation should be one which is at most important expenses which has to be done for standard of living one is savings which is 20% which is needed for future goals and retirement purpose and jo bacha hua component hai that's up to you now there might be certain people who might say ke mujhe ye 3000 rupees bhi savings mein hi rakhne hain i don't have any immediate goal mujhe na koi trip karni hai na koi phone lena hai kuch nahi karna hai you can park this money into some debt funds or liquid funds jahan pe minimal aapko returns aa jayenge and you can use it whenever you like it's not hard and fast ke maine kaha 50 30 20 karna hai to 50 30 20 karna hai. but how would you be define ke 50 30 20 karna hai ya 50 50 karna hai ya i need 80% of that income into my expenses only that can only be done when you note down your incomes versus ex- most necessary expenses then only you will come to know okay whether you are positive or negative why i am saying negative is because if your expenses are becoming more than your income you will have to start identifying the ways to cut down on your expenses for example agar main mera personal example leta hu now from couple of months uh in couple of months i would be going for a home loan so what will happen is as of now i used to order once or twice in a month from zomato or swiggy a, a good meal would make me happy however now that i would have an additional liability of emis i would have to cut down on certain expenses which are not required for me which i can skip या फिर मैं दो एक महीने की जगह पे उसकी फ्रीक्वेंसी कम कर दूंगा आई कैन गो फॉर अ गुड लंच गुड मील इन टू मंथ्स राधर देन यू एवरी मंथ मैं उस पर खर्चा करूं सिमिलरली राधर देन यू टेकिंग अ कैब टू ऑफिस आई कैन स्विच टू पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट या फिर मैं पॉसिबली uh, कहीं मैं चल के चले जाऊं स्टेशन तक मैं चल के जा लाऊं इट वुड हेल्प मी एक्सरसाइज एज वेल एज वेल एज मेरे थोड़े पैसे बच जाएंगे एट द the end of the month if i'm able to save certain amount this will help me in my in achieving my retirement goal now an interesting statistics of which i would like to share is about inflation uh what we 
say about inflation is uh before i talk about inflation i just want uh, somebody from the participants to tell me what is just take a guess that what inflation would be would anybody like to take a guess yeah sir uh, it is i think uh, the increasing amount of the products means the value of the money is going down and the uh, value of the product is increasing exactly exactly bang on so basically what inflation tells us is in simple layman terms if i am spending 1000 if i am earning 1000 rupees and i am i am able to afford a certain standard of living and the inflation percentage of this particular year if i consider it as 6.5% in the next year i won't be able to use six, uh, the prices of the uh, goods which i was able to purchase in last year would have gone up by 6.5% so ideally if you see you would be short of funds in the next year if you keep your income state uh, state so if there is no rise in your income by way of investments by way of salary increments or any other means if you are not able to beat the inflation then at a certain point of time you will start to feel the heat of this inflation what is if if you look at uh, uh so a few days back we had a session where uh, we were we had shown a statistics where which talked about how inflation is eating up our savings what that means is that right now the current statistics says that our inflation is at around 6 and 6 6.5% if i keep my 10000 rupees in bank account say assume that there is no interest or if i say 10 i take out 10000 rupees from bank account and keep it at home for necessities Am I audible, Shitika? Yes, yes. No. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Ah, uh, so if I take out ten thousand rupees and keep it at home, in next twenty years, if the interest rate of inflation say stays steady at six and a half percent, I would be left with three thousand three three thousand to three thousand five hundred rupees only. So, assume. आप ये सोच लो. कि आज अगर आप दस हजार रुपए में महीना बिता पा रहे हो यू वुड हैव ओनली थ्री थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज आफ्टर ट्वेंटी ईयर्स इफ योर इनकम स्टेज स्टेडी एंड यू डोंट जनरेट एडिशनल अल्टरनेट इनकम सोर्सेस पर्सनल फाइनेंस इज नथिंग बट जनरेटिंग अल्टरनेट एडिशनल इनकम सोर्सेस इज एज सिंपल एज दैट हाउ वुड यू जनरेट एडिशनल इनकम सोर्सेस इज बाय इन्वेस्टिंग the amount which you are saving every month ab hum ye nahi soch sakte ke how can we become a elon musk ya us level pe hum kaise pahunche we don't target that we don't target ke hum karodpati kaise bane i i personally if you ask me i do not believe in saying aap agar youtube pe videos wagera dekh rahe hain ya koi bata raha hai aapko ke aap महीने में पंद्रह हजार सेव करो एस आई पी में रखो म्यूचुअल फंड्स में रखो तो आप आपके दस साल में एक करोड़ बन जाएंगे इट मे बी पॉसिबल इट मे नॉट बी पॉसिबल हाउ एव यू विल हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाट इज योर फाइनेंशियल गोल्स वेयर डू यू वांट टू सी योर सेल्फ आफ्टर थर्टी ईयर्स आपको रिटायरमेंट के बाद आपको क्या करना है हाउ मच मनी वुड यू रिक्वायर एवरी बडी हैज हिज ओन फाइनेंशियल नीड and it is at most important to understand what is my financial need i may not have any medical expenses right now i may i would be able to save that financial expenses ka money say 100 rupees a month of financial expenses i may not spend on some other additional food or some outings so wo 500 rupees mein ek club kar liye now do by clubbing all those expenses i am able to save 1000 5000 rupees a month which i am able to invest for my future needs what those future needs may be those future needs may be medical expenses those future needs may be a hospitalization 
those future needs may be um, education cost for children. So for all those, either I need a windfall gain at that particular moment, or, or I need to provision. And the only way to provision for all this is by building a discipline to save every month. Now, how to save every month? A personal recommendation would be to create automatic savings. Automatic savings. So what I mean by automatic saving, there are a couple of ways in which you can save automatically. Okay? Uh, I would say more than a couple. One uh, is, जो सबको पता है आजकल टीवी रेडियो सब जगह पे चलता है म्यूचुअल फंड्स एसआईपी करो एसआईपी में पैसे जाते रहेंगे ओवर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम हिस्टोरिकली वी हैव सीन दैट इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स हैव गिवन समवेयर अराउंड 12 टू 14 परसेंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इनकम आर रिटर्न ऑफ रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट वेयर एज इफ यू गो फॉर डेट फंड दीज है इनकम uh by why i am saying historically is because all these mutual funds are dependent on economic conditions russia ukraine war hua covid aaya 2008 ka crisis hue these all impacted the mutual fund industry not only mutual fund industry but the economy as a whole when certain uh, conditions such as covid and certain wars or financial crisis occur it majorly impacts economy what it does is when economy is impacted there are certain set of companies which get impacted their revenues go down and ultimately you know navs of the fund goes down because nav going up or down is basically an indication of your stock price going up and down and when your stock prices go up and down is indication well how good the company is doing if the company is doing good your stock prices will go up your nvs will go up this everything everything going up is sign of a good economy is is a healthy economy india is a good economy seen as super is a future superpower by multiple nations is being acknowledged right now so one thing which we can do is allocate a certain portion of our total savings into equity mutual funds it obviously depends on what is your age how soon are you looking at retirement and how much percentage of returns are you looking at okay now let's talk about uh, how much should you allocate where okay humne ye baat kar li ki hame 50% se upar possibly kharche nahi karne hain of our income humne ye baat kar li ki humne 20% save kar liya now where should i park it aur kitne time ke liye mujhe park karna chahiye okay this whole investment cycle depends upon what are we looking at are we looking at a goal which is at 3 years of uh, which is within 3 years of our time period or are we looking at a goal which is 10 years away from today ya fir hum ye dekh rahe hain ki i want certain money to come in at my retirement age okay the second factor which we need to understand is what is my current age and how soon am i going to retire why i am saying this is because there are two types of strategies when anybody invests one is to defend the income second is to grow the income what do we mean by growth versus defense assume karo ke my age is 45 or 50 and i am nearing to retirement and my income is sufficient enough to save uh, to lead a good healthy lifestyle but main itna bhi nahi kama raha hu ki i have a surplus a very high surplus which i can invest into risky funds or risky equities which can go down and make my total investment zeros 
Why? Because I have certain needs which needs to be fulfilled by the in next 15 years by the age of 60. जब मैं retire हो जाऊँगा, it might be possible कि मैं शायद 55 या 58 तक ही retire हो जाऊँ. So what I need to do is I need to allocate a heavy portion of my savings into debt equipments or FDs or RDs, so that I have a constant growth without any risk. By constant growth, what do I mean? Constant growth का मतलब ये है कि मैं ये अजूम कर रहा हूँ आज मेरा एज 45 है इन्फ्लेशन रेट इस 6.5 परसेंट इफ आई वांट टू सस्टेन माय लाइफस्टाइल आई नीड टू हैव मिनिमम ऑफ सिक्स एंड हाफ परसेंट का इंटरेस्ट रेट करेंटली इफ आई लुक एट लुक इन टू द मार्केट एवरीज़ आर गिविंग मी इंटरेस्ट रेट्स ऑफ if I start building RDs or FDs for these particular in in this particular time periods for this particular time period, I have an interest rate which is locked in for next five years or eight years, which will constantly give me seven percent on my in investment for next eight years, which is beating my inflation. This is what we are saying. कि हम ये defend कर रहे हैं हमारी income को. With the rising inflation, most probably we RBI would come up with measures to keep this inflation in between four to six percent. Why I'm saying this is because is because the target inflation for India is four to six percent. However, when we do budgeting, we look at the inflation rate as more than six percent. Conservatively, we look at look at it to be eight percent. So that whenever we do any kind of investments, we have a sufficient buffer over our inflation ka returns. What I mean to say is, आज अगर मैं six six and a half percent inflation की बात कर रहा हूँ, I am targeting at eight more than eight percent का returns because अगर ये थोड़ा सा ऊपर भी चले जाता है in next couple of years, in next five years, say this inflation reaches seven and a half percent, I still have a cushion. कि मेरे सेविंग्स इंटैक्ट हैं, आई एम नॉट लूजिंग माय परचेसिंग पावर। दिस इज़ द कंसर्वेटिव वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट इन्फ्लेशन एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट रिटर्न्स। नाउ व्हिच ऑल अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट मेथड्स आर देयर व्हिच कैन डिफेंड माय इन्वेस्टमेंट। वन इज एनपीएस, ठीक है? वन इज एनपीएस, एनपीएस आज के दिन Yes, it is more uh, risky than the government securities like PPF and uh, your ELSS or your fixed deposits or debt funds, uh, which is which are basically liquid funds. But why I am saying NPS is because if you keep invested in NPS and you, if you don't have any kind of other uh, alternate incomes, you would be assured of certain percentage of. Uh, amount to be put into annuity when you retire, and you will start getting pension from that income. Uh, okay. well, uh, 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 Ketan, one sec. Uh, when yes, you sir. use, when you are uh, saying NPS and uh, various uh, uh, abbreviations, uh, just uh -huh. say the full form also once, so that there might be some people who might be wondering, "Ye NPS kya hai? National Pension sure. Scheme, I guess." No. Sure. Yes. Correct, yeah. sir. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank sure. you. So national pension, uh, as Sir rightly mentioned, NPS is basically national pension scheme, which which is launched by government. What government says is that there are basically two types of N, uh, national pension scheme, NPS. Okay, one is your investment would be in tier one NPS scheme or tier two NPS scheme. If you go for tier one NPS scheme, you will get a tax benefit of one lakh fifty thousand under ATC if you don't have any other ATC ka investments done. If you fulfill ATC ka one lakh fifty thousand already, if you are still in old regime and you are using one lakh fifty thousand, what government says is that there is an ATC CDB which you can use for additional fifty thousand ka benefit, which in total you would get two lakh. One lakh fifty thousand in ATC, where you make your investments like uh, public provident fund of PPF, uh, employee pension fund or uh, like EPF. You invest in NPS, mein invest kar lo, ya fir life insurance. Le lo, all these come under one lakh fifty thousand. The tax uh, benefit of ATC. 
मोमेंट आई से मेरा ए टी सी तो भर गया है नाउ वॉट शुड आई डू इफ यू स्टेल इन्वेस्ट इन ई पी एफ इन अयर और वर्थ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वॉट विल हैपन इज इफ यू आर इन द लोएस्ट बैकेट यू वुड गेट टेन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट टेन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट का टैक्स बेनिफिट विच इफेक्टिवली मीन्स क्या पचास हजार रुपया डाल रहे हो और दस हजार रुपया उसमें से बचा रहे हो विच इज इफेक्टिवली आपके चालीस हजार रुपये इन्वेस्ट हो रहे हैं और आपके चालीस हजार रुपये ग्रो हो रहे हैं द वन कैविएट विच इज देयर इज कि आपके ये जो पैसे हैं इन जनरल इफ यू डोंट टेक इट आउट फॉर एनी क्रिटिकल इलनेस और इफ यू डोंट विद्रॉड इट इन बिटवीन यू वुड गेट the uh, out of total amount 40% would be uh, sorry 60% would be taken out at the maturity which is 60 years of your age which is retirement age and 40% would be invested into its mandatory to invest into an annuity product the benefit of this is agar aapke paas you do, if, if you don't have an alternate income source if you say ke i i am earning barely enough to sustain my lifestyle but i don't have savings uh, uh, i don't have much buffer to save then you can invest in such schemes which government uh, government gives out or there can be certain lis uh, lic policies as well which if you keep on investing in certain i don't i'm not sure whether these exist as of now many of them have been discontinued by lic uh, but such, such policies will help you get a get an assured income from government itself after you retire till the time uh, you uh, are uh, you are alive so up to 60th year ke baad mein every year you would start getting certain amount of pension say 10000 20000 kuch to aapko ek income aana chalu ho jayegi which would help ease the burden of expenses okay now let's see the scenario where i have a certain amount which i don't know where to park what should i do with it and also i am in early phases of my career what should i do with it if i talk about people who are in their early 20s or say early 30s what should they do with this surplus income main meri income up to 20000 25000 ya 30000 hai mere kharche 15000 mein ho jate 15 18000 mein ho jate mere paas 12000 rupaye bache hue hain what should i do with this income and i don't need this income, this money what should i do with it i would suggest that of this income park 50% into large cap mutual funds obviously there are various dif- different equity funds there is large cap fund there is index fund there is small cap and mid cap okay why i am saying large cap funds is because i could i can suggest that equities mein dal do equities mein bahut acha return aata hai यूट्यूब पे कोई बहुत बड़े इन्फ्लुएंसर ने ये कहा है कि ये इक्विटी में डाल दो इसमें बहुत अच्छा पास रिटर्न आया है इट्स इट्स सिमिलर केस विद म्यूचुअल फंड्स एज वेल कीप इन माइंड दैट म्यूचुअल फंड्स आर आल्सो रिस्की बट विदाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द रिस्क ऑफ वन सिंगल कंपनी यू इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इन्वेस्ट इन इक्विटी वॉट यू विल टू डू यू हैव टू गो बैक You will have to understand what all those ratios are. P ratio क्या होता है, debt ratio क्या होता है, company ने debt कितना लिया हुआ है, company business कितना करती है. Rather than getting overwhelmed with all those things, let a mutual fund manager take all those all that headache for you. What you will have only have a basic concept of mutual fund is there is a person and a company called mutual fund AMC. Okay. these people what they do is they research the entire market okay they research the entire market pick out certain companies which they feel that these would be good enough companies to give me certain returns now there are a sebi uh, ek security exchange board of india hai which is a go- parallel to uh, rbi which looks after the equity business and the mutual fund business these guys have defined ke large cap mein कौन सी कंपनीज होनी चाहिए मिड कैप में अगर म्यूचुअल फंड आप लॉन्च कर रहे हो विच कंपनी शुड बी देयर स्मॉल कैप में आप अगर इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हो तो कौन सी कंपनीज होनी चाहिए अकॉर्डिंगली ऑल दिस म्यूचुअल फंड स्कीम्स आर डिफाइंड इफ यू लुक एट सर्टेन लार्ज कैप फंड्स एंड इंडेक्स फंड्स 
these are generally considered as the top growing are the uh, bouquet of the top growing companies in the country as of now why i am saying ki mutual fund me dal do na ki what you can say is ke what i can do is main mutual fund ko dekh ke main equity me dal dunga mutual fund me mujhe 2000 rupees invest karna tha what i'll do is i'll rather than me paying them some 1% expense ratio ek expense ratio karke expenses hote hain mutual fund houses basically kya kehte hain ke aapke behalf pe i'll do all the heavy lifting i'll do the market research and everything you give me 1000 rupees i'll invest that 1000 rupees into market however aapke returns pe se wo 1% le lete hain so basically what you see in the market is 12% ka return aaya hai kisi mutual fund pe actually that return is 13% however the mutual fund company for doing all the heavy lifting takes out 1% as expense ratio and gives you back 12% or 10% or 8% that's how it is now you will say ke main ek kaam karta hu main agar is company ka pura main kisi mutual fund ko dekhta hu kisi uska composition dekhta hu aur us mutual fund mein jitne bhi companies invest hui hai utno pe main khud hi invest kar dunga i'll save that 1% the main thing for a mutual fund house is ke unke paas bahut sare aise mutual fund uh, experts baithe hue hain with who keep on looking for companies their main work is to increase the amount of returns generated so that many people would start investing and they would start getting more and more commissions out of you agar 1% sirf ketan ke investment se aa rahi hai assume karke chal do ki agar main mere performances consistent rakhu if i am able to give you good returns ketan ke 10 dost bhi mere paas aayenge उन सब के इन्वेस्टमेंट के एक एक परसेंट मुझे मिलना चालू होंगे दैट्स व्हाई दीज म्यूचुअल फंड्स स्ट्राइव फॉर एक्सेलेंस एंड व्हाट दे डू इज दे ट्राई टू रीबैलेंस ऑल दीज म्यूचुअल फंड्स बाय लुकिंग एट दीज कंपनीज ईच एंड एवरी डे ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन उनका काम यही है टू पिक एंड चूज कंपनीज फॉर अस टू गिव अस म्यूचुअल फंड एक म्यूचुअल फंड का बुके वो ला देंगे इसमें सारी कंपनीज होंगी विच works good according to them how would you select ki la koi large cap mein dalna hai to kya kare go for a general idea of how to select a mutual fund is if you don't want any kind of risk the simplest mutual fund to pick is the index fund what index fund tells you is that it is basically a replica of nifty 50 आज अगर आप हिस्टोरिकली आप म्यूचुअल फंड्स देखोगे म्यूचुअल फंड्स आर बेसिकली आपकी निफ्टी फिफ्टी भी ईयर ओवर ईयर इट इज अर्निंग रफली अराउंड ट्वेल्व परसेंट ओवर दी पास डेकेट प्लीज मेक श्योर दैट यू आर नॉट इन्वेस्टिंग इन टू म्यूचुअल फंड फॉर वन और वन एंड हाफ ईयर देर माइड बी रिस्क ऑफ फ्लक्चुएशन इन योर रिटर्न हेवेली if you go if you go and see the mutual fund returns right now in couple of last couple of months the returns have go, gone down because of because of certain economic stress uh ketan uh your audio we've lost your audio i guess am i audible now yes now yeah so what i was saying is if you go back and compare the index funds versus um, the mutual fund, uh, the nifty 50 you would see uh, both of them giving pretty much equal amount of returns in last 10 years 5 to 10 years if you are going for mutual fund investments i would say as commoners you and me what we should do is we should build a habit of investing a small percentage into mutual fund every month so that we do not get affected by these heavy changes into enemies otherwise what you will have to do is that you will have to understand the entire cycle aapko dekh aapko ye samajhna padega ke kis din pure saal mein mutual fund sabse lowest the which is at most impossible for us to understand ke aaj agar x percent पूरा मार्केट नीचे गया है 
विल इट गो डाउन टूमोरो और विल इट गो अप ये हमें नहीं पता चलता सो वॉट वी need to do is we just need to be, be consistent in our investments every month you keep on investing x amount of rupees say aap 500 rupees dalte ho mutual fund mein safe side aap index fund mein dalte ho ya fir fds mein dalne ki jagah pe aap liquid funds mein dalte ho liquid funds are nothing but jo government bonds ya government ke treasury uh, currency notes mein invest karte hain which will give you okay return 6 se 8 percent ke return de dete hain over अयर अगर आपसे इन सब में कंसिस्टेंटली एस करते हो द बेनिफिट फॉर अस इज कि आप की जो इन्वेस्टमेंट है वो पूरे साल के अमाउंट की पूरे साल के एनएवी की एक एवरेज मिल जाएगी एंड जनरल जनरली व्हाट इज सीन इन द मार्केट इज दैट आप अगर बहुत लंबे समय के लिए लाइक फाइव एट और टेन इयर्स के लिए आप अगर ये आपकी एस की हैबिट मेंटेन करते हो you would be able to see a good growth in the uh, in your portfolio now if i talk from the perspective ke 45 years wale bolenge ke are ye to aapne 20 saal walon ke liye bol diya ke wo to unke paas 10 15 saal ka horizon hai hum kya kare what should we do what you can do is you can go for dividend giving mutual funds dividend giving uh, dividend payout mutual funds kya hote hain maine index fund ki baat ki इंडेक्स फंड की एनएवी जो होती है व्हाट दे डू इज दे कीप ऑन जनरेटिंग रिटर्न्स ऑन दी इन्वेस्टमेंट्स व्हिच दे हैव मेड ओके ये सारे जो रिटर्न्स होते हैं वो राधर देन पेइंग यू आउट व्हाट दे डू इज दे दे इन्वेस्ट बैक इनटू द म्यूचुअल फंड इटसेल्फ सो दैट इट कीप्स ऑन ग्रोइंग जहां यही पे इन्हीं म्यूचुअल फंड का एक अल्टरनेट भी होता है व्हिच इज डिविडेंड पेआउट म्यूचुअल फंड वॉट दीज डिविडेंड पे आउट म्यूचुअल फंड डू इज अ सर्टन पोर्शन ऑफ दैट इनकम विच इज जनरेटेड इज पेड आउट इक्वली बिटवीन दी यूनिट होल्डर्स ऑब्वियसली पूरा का पूरा रिटर्न वो आपको रिटर्न नहीं करते वॉट दे डू इज अगर आपने सौ रुपए हर महीने लगाए हैं आप पूरे साल में बारह सौ रुपए आपने इन्वेस्ट किए हैं वॉट दैट म्यूचुअल फंड इज उन बारह सौ रुपए को उन्होंने हर महीना इन्वेस्ट किया उन बारह सौ पे दे हैव जनरेटेड एन रिटर्न ऑफ हंड्रेड रुपीज वॉट देल डू इज देल पे यू टेन रुपीज बैक एज डिविडेंड एंड इनवेस्ट बैक नाइनटी रुपीज एज एज एन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द म्यूचुअल फंड अगेन सो दैट इट वुड कीप ऑन क्यूमुलेटिवली इंक्रीजिंग द ओनली गॉन अ नेगेटिव साइड इन दिस इज अ growth mutual fund which is basically a non dividend payout mutual fund will grow a bit higher its, its rate of interest would be a bit higher 0.5 or it's, it's it's less than 1% but it would be a bit higher because it is investing the entire returns back into its mutual fund whereas if you have the dividend uh, mutual fund you would have the income in your hand as as soon as possible but be uh um, be wary of this that not all dividend mutual funds will pay you out dividends it all depends on how good the mutual fund is performing so agar mutual fund year end pe agar returns hi nahi generate kar pa raha hai because of certain financial conditions or economic conditions they may not they may opt to not to pay you dividends for that particular year so you will have to be wary of it that's why i mentioned about growth uh, the different tactics that if you have an equivalent in uh, investment in your fixed deposits or recurring deposits where well, you are getting certain amount back as interest you have a safe when you where you are getting a certain amount every month in your hands so that's how uh, investments are if you it it's basically i think i think if i talk about there is i would just add one more point into mutual funds which is basically tax saving mutual funds we talked about nps uh alternate to the national pension scheme which is nps is a public provident fund which is a which is widely known as ppf uh, a 15 year lock in uh, lock in investment instrument 
Along with this, there is a shorter tax saving instrument in mutual fund as equity linked savings scheme. This is basically a three years investment uh, instrument, which is given to us. Uh, obviously, there this is a highly risky instrument, which will give you tax benefit. However, the returns may not be stable. It may happen that over a period of time, uh, over a period of time of three years, you have invested uh, a certain amount. However, when you are going to withdraw that amount, the NAV may not be that great or it, it may not even give you returns basis the economic conditions. The caveat which everybody needs to understand is that in equity linked savings schemes or any mutual funds, when we talk about LTCG and STCG, always remember LTCG and STCG is considered from the date of investment. Agar up SIP karre ho, SIP ka matlab hai ab har mahine ya har ek frequency pe you are putting in some money back into mutual fund. When you calculate LTCG, kindly do not calculate from the inception date. Inception ka matlab hai, mainne 1st of April 2023 ko SIP start ki. Now, on 31st of March 2025, which is basically two years away, which ideally is a LTCG wala uh, calculation. More than two, if your mutual fund investment is invested for more more than one year, it is considered as your LTCG. However, when you are doing an SIP, aapki jo pahli SIP hai, that would be more than one year. The, for that particular year, you have, so agar aap April 24 mein uh, withdraw karna chate ho, the first investment which you have made is uh, falling under LTCG. However, rest all investment would go under STCG, which is short-term capital gain. You will have to make sure that all these investment, if, if you want to take out the entire uh, mutual fund portfolio. Ketan, sir, sorry to interrupt. Uh, would you please clarify full form of LTCG and LTSG, please? Yes. yes. Thank you. LTCG. LTCG and STCG, what I mean by this is long-term capital gain and short-term capital gain. Okay. In most of our investment portfolios, these two terms you will keep on hearing. What these means is every different type of instrument uh, which we invest in has a certain uh, time period investment time period over which the tax is calculated. STCG ka matlab hai short term capital gain whereas ltcg is a long term capital gain okay now what i mean by short term and long term capital gains okay short term capital gain ka in general matlab hota hai ke if you have if your investment holding period is less than 1 year then that particular investment instrument will the, the gains which you have made in that instru investment instrument. Example, let's say mutual fund. Ka. First of simple example would be January to December. But first of Janko invest kiya. Okay. First of Janko invest karne ke baad mein, if I hold that investment till the next January. So, this long-term capital gain, this is the upper jobi gains. I have invested 1000 Now, when I'm taking it out, it has become 1100 rupees. The 100 rupees gain, which I have made, which is basically the capital gain, this is taxed as per long-term capital gain because I have hold this 1000 rupees which I had invested, the units which were allocated to me against this 1000 rupees, I have hold it for more than 365 days. If I decide that I don't want to hold it for more than 365 days, I would be charged as under STCG, which is short-term capital gain. Short-term and long-term ka matlab ye hai ke short-term is basically less than 365 days and long-term is greater than 365 days. Generally, why I'm saying LTCG and STCG is because aap jab tax, taxation mein jaoge, STCG, which is short-term capital gain, 
it is generally taxed as taxed at the individual ka tax level where as ltc ji agar aap 365 days ke upar hold karte ho kisi cheez ko aapko 10% flat tax lagta hai over capital gains this is how the ltc ji and stc ji is ek chhota sa cheez hai which is real estate investment रियल इस्टेट पे एल टी सी जी इज मोर देन थ्री इयर्स अगर आप कोई घर परचेस करते हो एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सेल इट आउट विद इन थ्री इयर्स तो आपको शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल गेन लग जाता है आइडियली इफ यू आर टेकिंग एनी बेनिफिट एज वेल अगर उस घर के अगेंस्ट आप कोई टैक्स बेनिफिट भी ले रहे हो यू आर सपोज टू होल्ड दैट हाउस फॉर थ्री ईयर्स मिनिमम अगर यू माइट हैव हर्ड के देर आर सर्ट an ate or something uh, which gives you tax benefit over interest income of the uh, sorry the interest paid over the uh, housing loans these all benefits which you take have are only allowed to you if you don't sell your house within 3 years if you sell your house within 3 years in the next filing which you are going to make you will have to reverse all this and pay tax on it uh i think that's it from my side i won't uh, go into much of nitty gritties of the taxation 